Hey fishing friends, in today's video, we're gonna do a complete tear down, disassembly, cleaning, and lubrication, and then reassembly of a Luz Mach 2 low profile bait casting reel. Stick around. Hey folks, Keith here from Chicken Thigh Fish and welcome aboard. Today we're going to tear down this reel here. It's a Mach 2 from Luz Fishing. We're going to disassemble, clean, lubricate, and reassemble, get this puppy ready for next spring. It's winter time up here in New England, so I'm going through my reels, and I'm going to do a video for each one of the reels that I clean, in case you have the same reel and you'd like to see a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to tear it down and clean it. Now the first thing I always say in my cleaning videos is I always recommend you work on a movable surface. I use a cookie sheet here and I put a chamois cloth in it that's orange so it contrasts the parts well so I can see them and you know I don't miss them. But more importantly it's movable so if I have to leave in the middle of it I'm able to pick it up, put it on top of a refrigerator or a cabinet, put it down in the basement and get it out of harm's way. Because if you're like me and you have kids running around, you have pets, somebody's going to come across that if you have to take off and you're going to have a cat bat the reel around or you're going to have a kid grab a part and you're not going to know it. So it's always a good idea to work on a movable surface when you tear down a reel. When you're new to this, it's going to take you an hour or more to do this. So you may have to break away while you're in the middle of the job. So work on a movable surface and you can put it up out of harm's way. Let's get cracking. The first step we're going to do is remove the palm side plate. And on this reel, there's a release lever on the back side of the palm side plate. All you got to do is click that, go ahead and rotate the palm side plate off, put that aside. That will allow you access to the spool so you can remove the spool. The next thing we're going to do is remove the handle assembly, the external part of the drag star assembly, and the handle side plate. To do this, you're going to need a screwdriver to remove the handle retaining uh, screw. And the handle retaining screw holds in place the handle knob retainer and sometimes it comes off from gravity like that if it doesn't just pop off when you tap that just grab a flathead screwdriver and you can pop it off fairly easily so once you have the retainer and the screw off you remove the handle nut on most reels you're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench to do that or you know a small adjustable wrench or whatever uh, and I as always I'm gonna caution you that if you are a lefty like me on a left-handed reel it's not righty tighty lefty loosey like everything else in the known universe it's the opposite so in order to loosen the handle nut on this we're not going to turn it to the left we're going to turn it to the right you got to be cognizant of that because if you turn it the opposite way and you put too much pressure on it these nuts are easy to strip and then you'll have to order a new one probably cost you like 19 cents and then you'll pay 6.95 for shipping so it's no bargain so we're going to go ahead and turn that nut, we're going to break it <clears throat> to the right, remove the rest of it by hand. Once that handle nut is off, you can remove the handle. And nine times out of ten, when you remove the handle, the uh, handle washer is going to be stuck to it. But in this case, it's not. So there's always a washer right under the handle. Most of the time when you remove it, it's stuck here, so you want to know that that's here. So if you don't see that washer right there, it's because it's stuck to the back of your handle. In this case, it's not stuck, so I'm going to go ahead and 
remove it. And as always, I'm going to lay the components out in order as I remove them in a neat and orderly fashion so it makes it that much easier for me to reassemble. Now once you have the handle removed, you can go ahead and remove the star drag. Removing the star drag is simple as unscrewing it. Now underneath the star drag, you're going to have a series of washers. I'm going to remove those and I'm going to lay them down in the same orientation that I removed them on. Now these two washers here in particular have a curve to them and they have to go in back in the same way when you reassemble. So the same way you take them off, lay them down and then be cognizant of that when you pick it up to clean it that you keep it in the same orientation you keep the same side facing up so you have them curved the correct way they have a curve to them they're not completely flat it's not a very noticeable curve but if you look at it you will see it so once you have those washers out you have a sleeve that goes on the main gear shaft sometimes that sleeve will come out as you work on the reel other times, because of the dirt and the oil and the grime that gets in there, it sticks in there. So since this doesn't want to pop out on me, ah, there we go, I was able to get it there. Typically, there is either one or two washers on top of your sleeve, and in this case, we have a washer here. So that's no big deal if that sleeve doesn't come out. You can easily take it out once we remove this handle side plate. Uh, I just always like to point that out so in case you don't notice that and while you're taking off the handle side plate it falls off, you understand where it came from. So on the Mach 2 reel, I haven't taken one of these apart before so I'm going to check it out as we go. We have three screws on the outer side of the handle side plate and it looks like we have two screws on the inside so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the outside screws and you're gonna see here that when I remove the screws I'm gonna lay them out on my work surface in the same pattern that I removed them from the handle side plate and the reason for that is because on most bait casting reels you're gonna have different size screws uh, they may be different lengths or different diameters and so you want to lay them out where they go so you're not trying to put the wrong screw back in the wrong hole so I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna remove the rest of the screws so once again you'll see here that I laid these screws out in the same pattern that they go back in on the external side of the handle side plate and I can clearly see that a couple of these are different lengths so that's why you want to do that. Now we're going to go to the reverse side and the first screw is back in here and on this reel like many reels this second screw holding on the inside of the handle side plate is also securing the lubrication port door. So once I remove that I'm going to go ahead and remove the lubrication port by sticking a little implement in there and popping that off. And I'm going to put the lubrication port door next to the screw that secures it so I know that's the screw. Now, uh, one thing that's important about that lubrication port door is if you don't remove that, the way it sits in there, it secures this so you're not going to be able to lift the handle side plate off if you keep that in there. So you have to remove that. So now I have the outside screws and the inside screws removed. I should be able to lift the handle side plate off. So I'm going to carefully lift that off so nothing goes flying. And now I have your handle side plate. Now inside there is that sleeve I was talking about. So I'm just going to poke that through with my finger. Now very important about the sleeve. 
the sleeve has two different ends. They look the same at first glance, but they're not. The bottom is completely circular, and the top has two straight sides to it. It's kind of shaped like this. It's got two straight sides to it. That side goes out, goes towards the outside of the reel. So when you lay this down and then you pick it up and you manipulate it to clean it, you could flip it over. You don't want to put that back on backwards because your reel is not going to work properly and then you have to take it back apart and flip it over and put it back together. So the side with the two straight sides on it, uh, kind of a semi-rectangular opening, goes on top or faces out of the reel. So now I'm going to take my handle side plate and I'm going to put that aside. And so I know when I put it back together, this screw goes here, this screw goes here, this screw goes here. This is the small back screw, and this is the back screw that holds in the lubrication port door. Okay, so now we're ready to dismantle the interior of the reel. Here I recommend, if you haven't done this before and you're not familiar with tearing down bait casting reels, you take a couple good photos with your phone so you can see the orientation of everything. So if something doesn't look right when you reassemble, you have a photograph to refer to. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the main gear. Now usually when you remove the main gear, it takes a little manipulation to break it free. Okay, it doesn't take too much, but you don't want to manhandle it. You want to, if you have to use force to pop it free, you want to do so under control. Now also, when you remove this main gear, it's going to have a group of washers, the drag washers, sitting on top of it. But it's also going to have at least one washer and a ratchet stuck to the bottom of it. So I'm going to put my finger underneath it as I lift it up so I can hold those two bottom components in place. And then I'm going to slide them off in order. And I'm going to place the ratchet down and that carbon fiber washer. And that should be all that's on the bottom. And now we're going to have a series of washers on the top of the main gear. Now in most reels, when you take apart the washer assembly, it's going to have multiple parts. But I am seeing in this reel that it doesn't have very many at all. So it's got a steel washer, the main gear, with it looks like some other material washer that looks like it's adhered to the gear carbon washer and a ratchet so there's only one two three four components here now the last reel I did had 12 components to that assembly so you know there's some differences when it comes to doing different brands and different reels uh, different manufacturers so here this is easy we only have four components and so I'm gonna line those up in the order they go in now very important on the ratchet you'll see here that the teeth are facing one way. In this case, they're facing uh, toward the left. When you place that down, when you pick it up and clean it, and then when we go to reassemble, you're gonna wanna keep that in the same direction. Because what that ratchet does is it engages here with the thumb release, and that's what prevents your thumb release, that's what allows your thumb release to work properly. So if while cleaning this or manipulating it, you end up putting it on in the wrong direction like that it's not going to work and when you get it all back together and you press that thumb release and you go to crank the handle you're going to know immediately that that is on incorrectly then you're going to have to break it back down all the way to this point take it up and flip it over so when you take it off i recommend you lay it down in the same orientation that it goes back on and then when you're cleaning it you keep it in the same orientation so you can put it on correctly when it comes time for reassembly so now that we have the gear assembly off we're going to remove the yoke and the pinion gear there are two springs on the yoke posts you're going to set those aside and then when you lift up the pinion gear the yoke will come with it 
This pinkish red plastic piece is called the yoke, and this is the pinion gear. The pinion gear has a skinny side and a fat side. The fat side goes down, and the middle of it marries with the yoke, like you see here. So we're going to remove the pinion gear and the yoke. And the last part we're going to remove from this section of the reel is the main gear shaft with the lower gear and the bearing plate. So I'm going to take those two screws for the bearing plate for the bearing plate gear assembly. Now I should be able to lift this off. And when you're taking apart a bait casting reel, this bearing will either be clipped here with an E-clip and you don't have to really break it down. You can just oil it like so. Or there'll be a bearing in the pocket that it sits in, which is the case with this reel. And so we're going to remove that bearing and place that aside. So that's all we need to do for the interior of the handle side plate. The next part of the disassembly is going to be the hood and the entire worm gear and level wind assembly. So the first thing that you have to do to be able to access these components is to remove the hood, which is this front plastic uh, decorative piece that goes on your reel. Typically they are held in by either one or two screws on each side and it looks like this has one screw, maybe two. So we're going to remove the one screw from the handle side. And sometimes these screws have different sizes to them. And you want to kind of be careful because you can strip them fairly easy. So there's the one screw there. We're going to go over to the other side. Once I have those two screws off, the hood just pulls off. And so I'm going to lay that down here with the screws on the side that they go on. So I know where they, which side. You can see clearly here that those are two significantly different size screws. So the next thing we're going to remove is this rod here, which is called the pillar. And the pillar goes through one side of the housing, it goes through a hole in the level wind guide, and then it seats into the other side of the housing. And you can just remove that by hand. Usually it'll just fall out. And now that only goes in one way, so you're going to want to make sure you remember what side it comes out of and this one doesn't want to come out so easy so when I I'm gonna take this out this way and it only goes back in one way so I'm gonna keep it like this right here and you will see that one end of it has a little nub on it and that little nub seats in the opposite side so I took it out this way so I know that when I pick this up and I reassemble, I'm going to put it in this way. Now once I have the pillar removed, I'm going to go ahead and remove the nut on the level wind. And when I remove that nut, there is usually a spacer a very small spacer that is either going to be stuck to the pawl that sits in there or it's going to be stuck inside the cap and in this case it looks like it's inside the cap so I'm just going to leave that there and we're going to remove the pawl here and that will just come out by gravity And we'll place that aside. 
and you can see that's got a pretty good little piece of dirt on it there looks like a piece of weed so that's an example of the type of stuff we're going to be cleaning out of here so now that we have the pillar out and the pawl uh, that engages the level wind guide to the worm gear we're going to remove the worm gear assembly now this is another area where you may want to take a photograph of each side so you see what it looks like because on the handle side of the reel you're going to have a gear and there's usually a bearing under there and that gear is held in by a pin on the palm side of the reel you're going to have a bushing usually a spacer or two and then an e-clip that holds it all together so that's the palm side and this is the handle side and when you put this together you want to make sure you put it together the right way or it can get a little frustrating so the first thing we're going to do is remove the e-clip on the palm side because that's what holds this whole thing together then we will be able to disassemble in order to remove that e-clip i'm going to use a small flat headed screwdriver and it's got little grooves in it kind of little holes and i'm going to stick that in there and pop it off but I highly recommend when you do that that you cup your hand over it like this because usually, especially when it's new, when you pop that clip off, it's going to come off with a little bit of force. And so you want to catch it in your hand so it doesn't go flying. If that clip goes flying across the room somewhere, good luck finding it. So I'm going to stick my screwdriver tip in the little hole there. I'm going to cut my hand over it and pop it off and so it just popped off and it fell inside the housing so I just dump it out there and you're gonna find a spacer here or two let's see how many this one has looks like two and then underneath that second spacer is going to be a bushing plastic bushing and so we'll pop that bushing out and I will keep that spacer in place and slide it off and put that bushing right there all right so that's the those are the last components on this side so now that you have that disassembled that's going to free up the other side so instead of being tightly fastened here this will be loose enough for you to be able to pull out the worm gear tube and once you start to pull out the worm gear tube that's going to free up the level wind guide which is on the worm gear tube this is your level wind guide and the worm gear tube goes through the big hole and that pillar that we took out first goes through the small hole and so now i'm looking at the reel from the front and the worm gear tube goes in the handle side and so when you're reassembling this you want to know that it's going to go in this direction because it only goes in one way the worm gear tube has a lip on one end and the other end does not have a lip so in this case it's going to go in the handle side when we reassemble and so the lip will be on the handle side so i want to remember that when I lay it out here but first I have to remove this gear and this gear is held in place by a very small pin that fits into a groove on the top of this gear this pin can be a little bit of a pain because it is a very small component sometimes you can grab it with your hands other times you might need a pair of tweezers okay so there's that pin and so clearly you can see that is not a big component to work with so that pin holds this gear on so you can remove the gear and the pin and there will be a bearing underneath there and we're going to remove that bearing after we remove the worm gear itself so the worm gear will only go in and out of the worm gear tube in one direction you won't be able to pull it out this way for example so I just pushed out that bearing with the end of it and so I know that bearing is going to go 
on this end of the worm gear and the tube is going to go like that so I recommend setting this up in whatever way it works in your mind that helps you put it back together so I have the pillar in the correct direction if I'm looking at the face of the reel I have the pillar I have the worm gear and I have the worm gear tube so you may want to take and put the bearing on the side that it goes on the bushing goes on this side along with the spacers and the e-clip and on this side over the bearing goes the gear and the pin and for the level wind guide the pawl goes inside that hole and then has that cap on it so however you need to set it up to help is whatever your organizational style is that's how you want to set the components up and so as far as disassembly goes we're done I'm not going to break it down any further you can certainly get into all these smaller internal parts and springs and stuff but there's really no need to for routine maintenance on a bait casting reel so that's what this reel looks like sufficiently disassembled for routine maintenance and cleaning so now quite simply what we're going to do is clean the parts and then reassemble in order to clean the parts uh, everybody has their own thing that they clean with you may have a certain kind of solution or something that you use um, I guess there's no right way everybody's got their own way to do things I like to use Lysol disinfectant wipes uh, they seem to clean them efficiently and uh, I always use them and they seem to work fine so this is what I use so I'm gonna start off with the housing and we're just gonna clean everything okay so now we're done cleaning the components and it's time for reassembly uh, as I said it wasn't too too dirty but you can see the amount of dirt and old oil and old grease on these two rags I used <clears throat> but that wasn't a super dirty reel so now for reassembly what we're gonna do is simply put it back together in the reverse order that we disassembled it so the first thing we're gonna reassemble is the worm gear and the level wind guide assembly so I have the real housing facing me and you remember that the lipped end of the worm gear tube goes on the handle side you have the palm side and the handle side so I'm gonna stick that through the hole and now remember the level wind guide has to go on it so you stick that right through there and the other end of the worm gear tube seats into the hole on the other side and you just kind of have to manipulate that so you, it's sitting in there properly and you can kind of hear it and feel it click into place when you have it correctly so I have that worm gear tube in and now we are going to insert the worm gear itself now you remember the worm gear only goes in one way and it has a hole on one end and the hole is for that pin that holds the gear on the handle side so as long as you have the hole on the handle side you know it's correct and you stick that worm gear through there like so so now that we have the worm gear and the worm gear tube going through the level wind guide we're going to start to secure the palm side and the handle side of the worm gear with the components that go on each respective side and the side you're going to want to do first is the handle side where the end of the worm gear sticks out that has the hole in it and the reason you want to do this side first you want to put the bearing in and the gear and the pin and then second you're gonna put the bushing the spacers and the e-clip on this side because that's what holds it all together 
So the first thing we're going to do is put the bearing back on and it fits right into the lip of the worm gear tube. I'm going to take my lubrication oil before I put the gear on and I'm just going to drop a drop of oil on that bearing. Then I'm going to put the gear on it. Now you're going to see one side of this gear is flat. The other side of the gear has uh, two grooves in a cross section. And those are the grooves that that pin fits in. So you want those grooves facing up when you put this on. And so what you will have is the end of the worm gear with the hole in it sticking out. And you're going to get that pin in there. And you're going to manipulate it so that pin seats into one of the grooves on that gear and this is one of those things that sometimes it takes me 10 seconds and other times it takes me 10 minutes to get this little pin into the hole so you can see I got that through the worm gear and I'm just going to manipulate that until it seats into the groove on that gear so that's what it should look like there. You can see that the pin is through there and sitting in the groove on the gear. So now I want to hold this end in place while I move to the other side on the palm side. And once we're on the palm side, we're going to insert the bushing. And the bushing has a little rectangular protrusion on it. And there's a little groove for that to fit in and that only goes in one way so you just put that bushing into place I'm going to replace the spacers and then we're going to put the e-clip on so I'm going to take that e-clip and I'm going to get that into position on the end of the worm gear and I'm still keeping pressure on the gear here so nothing falls out and what I'm going to do is get a small screwdriver with a flat head that I can take that end and pop that on but I'm going to be careful to make sure that I cup my hand over it in case it pops off and you can see that I popped it on there. So now we have the gear side secure and we have the bushing side secure. And so now we will insert the pillar. And remember that pillar only goes in one way. It's got the nub on the end of it. So you put it on the hole on the palm side and through the corresponding hole on the level wind guide and then into the nub fits in the hole on the handle side so now that we have those in place we can go ahead and reinsert the pawl And now if the pawl sticks up, it's because the ears of it are sitting on top of the worm gear. And all you have to do is turn the worm gear and those ears will fall in. And so once it's in there flush, you can replace the cap, hand tighten it. And we now have the worm gear and the level wind assembly reassembled. So now what we're going to do is replace that hood we took off. And we're going to carefully put that into position so we don't stretch the uh, thin plastic there and break it. And that pops right in there. And we're going to replace the screws. And you don't want to over tighten those because you'll break the plastic. So I got the one screw on that side. 
Okay, so now that we have the worm gear assembly and the level wine assembly back on, it's time to reassemble the main gear assembly. We're going to start off with the bearing that goes underneath the bearing plate. We're going to hit that with some oil. And then we're going to replace the bearing plate assembly. And on most bearing plates, you're going to see it's got this curved section. And the way you know how to put it in correctly, because you can put it in like this and attach those screws. But you want that curved section to marry to the curved section of the gear hole here. So that's how you know it's on correctly. And then when it seats in there properly, it will marry with this gear. And you can see that that's improperly. So we're going to replace the two screws on the bearing plate. So now I'm going to take a screwdriver and I'm going to balance it on here so everything stays upright because if not, this always wants to fall over. So the first thing we're going to do now is put the yoke and the pinion gear. Now you'll remember the pinion gear has the fat side and the skinny side, the fat side goes down. It marries into the yoke and the pinion gear goes right in that hole and the yoke fits over the two yoke posts and you'll know when you have that incorrectly because there'll be enough of the yoke post sticking up to put the uh, springs back on so now that we have the pinion gear and the yoke in place we can go ahead and replace the ratchet which you have to make sure seats all the way down on the base of the main gear because it's got a oblong rectangular shape to it and that corresponds with the base of the gear the gear shaft so you want to stick that on there carbon washer gear you're going to stick the gear down so that it met the main gear so it meshes with the pinion gear and then you're going to replace the washer And so now we're looking pretty good. We have the main gear married with the pinion gear. We have the yoke in place. And we're going to replace the springs on the yoke post. And now we are all set. And prior to replacing the handle side plate, we're going to go ahead and grease the gears. And so I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the main gear and you don't have to put a lot I just like to put a little bit on the main gear and then when that marries with the pinion gear that grease will get distributed and your gears will be sufficiently greased so now we can replace the handle side plate which we are going to stick on and you feel a little resistance from those two springs and you get that into the correct position and then we can replace those screws in the same pattern that we removed them and again you can have different size several different size screws on a, on a reel so you want to make sure you have them in the right pattern and if it doesn't feel like it's going in correctly it's probably because you have the wrong screw so try a different screw So I have the three screws for the outside of the handle side plate inserted. We'll go to the back side for that small screw that's tucked in the corner there. And on this reel, the last screw will be on the lubrication port door. Make sure that's in flush. And this screw serves two purposes. It holds the lubrication port door in place as well as joins the main housing of the reel to the handle side plate and now we are ready to insert the sleeve which if you remember 
the side, the end of the sleeve that has the two straight sides faces up. It's kind of an oblong rectangular pattern. And you just work that all the way down there so it's flush. Sleeve washer. Curved washers in the same orientation that you remove them on. The drag star washer. And the drag star handle. You want to place that on there. Remember, I'm going to tighten it by moving it to the left instead of the right because this is a left handed reel. And I'm just going to thread it on there. And once it stops, it's not going to want to go further because it's going to move the worm gear. So if I hold the worm gear in place, I'm able to tighten that down. The level wind guide. So now we're going to replace the handle washer and the handle. And next we'll go on the handle nut. I'm going to turn it to the left to tighten it. And sometimes the first thread can be tough on this. You don't want to force it because you will strip that nut. So you want to make sure it's going on smoothly. I'm going to hand tighten it. You don't want to go too tight on your handle nut. And then now for the retainer, the handle nut retainer, it's got a hole in it that the handle nut retainer screw goes in, which goes in the corresponding hole on the handle. I'm going to put that just to the right of it. So now I have room to tighten this handle nut up and line up the hole. And once I have the hole lined up, I can go ahead and replace the handle nut retaining screw. And if it doesn't go right in, it's because you're not quite lined up. So you just want to tweak that handle nut retainer. Now we are ready for the spool to be reinserted. But before I do that, I'm just going to take a little drop of oil inside. I'm going to oil the bearing. Drop that in. I'm going to have the palm side plate and I'm going to oil the bearing inside there, which is the bearing for the magnetic brake dial. And I'm going to go ahead and replace the palm side plate and click it into place. Tighten down the drag a little bit and we have one reassembled and clean Mach 2 reel from Luz. So there you have it. Smooth, clean, quiet, just like new. You do this a few times, you'll get it down, trust me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was a help to you if you own this particular type of reel. I'm going to do videos for each of the reels I own, and if the, it happens to be a reel that you own and you'd like to see a video on a teardown and a clean and a reassemble, tune in. Hey, thanks for being a part of Chicken Thigh Fishing. We will see you next time. Until then, as always, stay fishing, my friends.